Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be destroying some books. <laughs> no, not actually. I just, um, a few weeks ago now I, I bought some discarded library books and they're still covered in mylar and I figured it's that, that plastic that they wrap the books in so they don't get damaged as easily. So I've decided to try my best to remove the mylar without destroying the book. I think it's possible. Um, the only tools I have with me are a pair of trusty old scissors. I think that's all I'll need. Um, it's really just, I've never wrapped a book in mylar myself. I do work at the library and I am allowed to do this if I want to um, like be on call for that area of the library, but I've just never had any interest personally. <laughs> but I do know that um, all they really do is they cut a piece of plastic, wrap the book in it, and then they tape it with this super, super sticky book tape. So I have a feeling that I probably won't be able to get the book tape off. I'm just going to try to just get the plastic off. And it, it should still have the barcode on it because the barcode, generally they put it on the actual book just in case if the mylar ends up getting torn off, which happens with picture books sometimes or like the tape will sometimes lose integrity over years and years and it'll kind of fall off or like little kids will I don't even know how honestly I don't know how little kids get the mylar off of books but I've had multiple picture books where it's just like been totally removed and you're like how did this happen so I guess we'll start with Jack Handy and we'll just dig in so while I do this I'm thinking I'll just chit chat a little bit um, so I'm trying to cut this off without also cutting the um, inside jacket flap of the book yeah it's not that hard I didn't really think of this when I had the idea to film this video um, but the mylar is probably gonna be really loud <laughs> so maybe I can't really talk while I'm actually pulling it off ripped it just a little bit. He's completely fascinated. There you go. So what I didn't realize when I bought this book, <laughs> it's by Jack Handy, and I had noticed when I bought it that it was by a comedian, that Jack Handy's a comedian, that um, was a writer for SNL, but I didn't connect it with Deep Thoughts with Jack Handy, <laughs> which I never watched. I didn't really watch SNL at the time that Jack Handy was a writer on it, but my husband did, and he's told me all about Deep Thoughts with Jack Handy. Um, yeah, I think I have some on my tablet that I can <laughs> go through. So a lot of these are brand new to me because I, I didn't really watch the show. So I think I'll just go through a couple of them. Um, while I have you here. I can picture in my mind a world without war, a world without hate, and I can picture us attacking that world because they'd never expect it. Something like that. Um, I love that one actually, I think that's hilarious. Before you criticize someone, you should walk a mile in their shoes. That way, when you criticize them, you're a mile away from them and you have their shoes. To me, boxing is like a ballet, except there's no music, no choreography, and the dancers hit each other. Anyway, that's Jack Handy, apparently. If you ever watched SNL when Deep Thoughts with Jack Handy was on, let me know your favorite Deep Thought with Jack Handy. I would love to hear that. Okay, so what I found out on the first side was that it's really hard to peel off the book tape, as I thought. Um, but I kind of accidentally ended up ripping it a little bit. I ripped the cover a little bit right there and down there. So on this side, I'm kind of thinking, I don't know what I'm thinking. Cut it, 
I might just cut it. Now, to extract, I might rip it. Aha! So there's a little section of glue there. It was just right there. Now the choice to make is put the dust jacket back on the book or just keep it like this. It's not super attractive either way, is it? I think I'll try putting it back on. It's not too sticky. It's kind of sticky, but I think it'll be okay. There we go. Removed of the shine factor. It's actually still a tiny bit shiny, but that's it. Um, the barcode's still on the back, um, but now it's not. It doesn't have the line put through it because when when we put the line through the barcode, it's actually on the mylar. So now for my super um, technical top secret method of removing barcodes from books. So I've done this a few times before when a patron damages a book and then they have to pay for it. If they pay for the book, they get to take it home. Um, but we remove the barcode so that I can send it to the, the head of collections and they'll delete the record from the system. So top secret library insider method of removing barcodes. Um, you just pick it. <laughs> you just try to get it off as best you can. <laughs> sometimes there's actually like a top layer and a bottom layer of the barcode. So sometimes you get the top layer off. So you can't scan it anymore, but there's still kind of a shadow um, of the, the barcode and the number below. And there's still that like really, really sticky barcode sticker material. This is an older book, so I'm hopeful that it will be not too hard to get off. Although this cover isn't very plasticky. It's easiest with like, say junior graphic novels, because their covers are really plasticky and shiny. So you can get the barcodes off pretty easily with those. And there's like no evidence that there ever was a barcode on it. I just did that last week, I think. That worked out really well. Once you've got enough of it pulled off that you can grip it with your two fingers. Ooh. <laughs> it went all at once at the end there. Um, there's just a tiny bit left. I think I'm just gonna leave, there's like a little bit of kind of clear sticky stuff left. I think I'm just gonna leave it on at least for now. It's a tiny bit, tiny bit of glue left, but that'll come off over time. So there we go. Can you see that, just that little kind of triangle right here that's still stuck on. I'm actually not gonna do this one. I just decided this now. I put it on the pile because it was part of the library hall, but my husband picked it out, so I don't think I'll remove the plastic from this one because maybe he wants it for some reason. I don't know. So I won't do that one. That means next book is this one, Hench, super duper shiny. So the other thing I wanted to talk about while I do this video is ARCs, advanced reader copies. So I signed up on NetGalley a couple months ago and I followed a whole bunch of advice from people. Like a lot of people were talking about how to get approved for as many for the books that you want on NetGalley, you know? And like, they're talking about making a good profile and having links to your social media and stuff and your Goodreads. And um, I had myself totally prepared to not be approved for like anything. My expectations were very low. Um, Cause people were talking about like reading some of the books that they have that like are auto approved, I think it's called, um, just to get your your stats up. You're like, what it's, what's it called? To, to get your feedback ratio up, which I didn't know what that was really when I started. 
now I've realized that actually some decent advice might be to only request one title at a time because your feedback ratio is the ratio of how many um, titles you have on your shelf waiting to be read, or like how many titles you've been approved for versus how many you've already given feedback for. So if you get 10 arcs all at once and you can't read them right away and it takes you a long time, then your feedback ratio and, you, and like you haven't given any feedback for any of them, then your feedback ratio is like zero <laughs> because you've, you've got 10 out, but you've given zero feedback. It's like, it's not very good. Zero for 10, right? So your percentage will go down. Okay, but I guess this, it, it depends on how many you've read like in total. Like say you, you've read, say you've gotten 10 arcs and you've only given feedback for one of them, then you have a 10% feedback ratio and that's not very good. But if you only have like two arcs on your shelf and you give feedback for one of them, then that's 50%. That's what I was trying to say. <laughs> um, so anyway, I was really, I was really prepared for it to not go very well and to like not be approved for much of anything. Um, so I only requested, I think, five arcs right off the bat. And one of them was from a really small publisher. I, get, I think two of them were from pretty small publishers. So I thought like, okay, chances are better with those ones. Maybe they'll approve me. They don't, probably don't have as many people requesting them. My cats are going crazy. And then, oh my God. Why cats, why? This book is a bit newer, so the book tape hasn't been on it for as long. I just pulled off one part of it and it came off perfectly. There's a bit of a shadow, but that'll go away. So exciting. So yeah, I only requested five arcs right away and I didn't really expect to be approved for any of them. Maybe one or two, hopefully, but like expectations really low. I was approved for all of them. Is that normal? <laughs> the first five books I request, and I was approved for all of them. Two of them are like really anticipated from popular authors. Um, so the, the book I'm reading right now is Sea of Tranquility by Emily St. John Mandel. Uh, she's a Canadian author. I'm Canadian. Maybe that had something to do with it. I think it's published by HarperCollins Canada. So I was shocked when I was approved for that one. That tons of people are really anticipating that book, especially right now. I think uh, one of her previous books is currently a TV show that's like already airing, um, Station Eleven, which was a really popular book as well. Yeah, and the other one I'm gonna read soon. I don't remember who the publisher was, but I don't think it was a Canadian publisher. Yeah, totally surprised. And it's really messing up my reading schedule. <laughs> I, I feel like that's a pretty privileged annoyance, but like I'm kind of annoyed because I'm like, I didn't expect this and now you're throwing off my reading for Black History Month and I have plans for March and now these books are coming out. Um, like I think Sea of Tranquility comes out in April and the other one I have to read comes out at the beginning of May. So just like, anyway. <laughs> it's really, really great, but I am, you know, having a hard time keeping up with them a little bit. So satisfying. There we go. Looking good. <laughs> okay. I think I'm gonna put the dust jacket on the book and then I'll try to get the barcode off. Which way does it go? This way. Oh, cute. <laughs> so this mask is just on the inside of the first page. And also on the cover, it's got a little, a little mask.
That's really cool. Okay, yeah, so I'm putting this in. I wonder if I'm approved for ARCs a little more easily because of my member type or user type or whatever it's called. Um, so I can, I have a librarian um, membership. I don't know if it's called membership, but yeah. So I'm a librarian on NetGalley. I don't have um, an accreditation number or code or whatever it is, like an ALA number or a CLA number that verifies that I'm a, like a professional librarian with a master's degree because I'm not one. <laughs> so, uh, but I am, my job title is community librarian. So I just tried for that um, account type and no problems. So yeah, don't feel bad if you haven't been approved as easily because that's probably factoring in quite a bit actually. No. Uh, okay, I, it's doing this. I can't stop it now. So I'll get to show you what I was talking about earlier. So sometimes this happens. So the actual barcode is gone. The numbers are gone, but there's still the, the sticky part there. <laughs> Try and get it off, but I don't know. Yeah. Just kind of, mm, just kind of does its thing. I think because it's a, it's a newer book, so the the glue or whatever in the sticker is newer, more fresh. So this is what we're stuck with. But hey, still much better than it was before, in my opinion. Not bad, not bad. And you can always take the jacket off now. You couldn't take it off before, so. Oh, one thing I haven't addressed is the um, cataloging, the shelf labels. That's what it's called, uh, this little bit. I don't really care about that. And they're, I've never tried to get one off before. I think it'll be really hard. So I'll try it on the jack handy. These are harder because they it curves around the spine a little bit. Okay. That's not too bad, actually. It's a little bit sticky, like, <laughs> it's very sticky. But it's gone. It came off pretty cleanly. I don't think it'll come off of this one as easily, though. Yeah. No, I'm just going to leave it on that one. All right, last book. Ooh, this one's wrapped differently. This one's wrapped differently. Okay, this is gonna be harder. <laughs> I just said this one's gonna be harder and I was just trying to lift it up a little bit and it just came off. <laughs> Never mind. It's funny, that it's like there's no tape. Oh, I see. So I think the tape is brittle or something. It just like came right off. <laughs> Done. <laughs> okay. And the book tape is coming off really smooth. Oh, shoot. That's not as bad as I thought it was. It ripped a teeny tiny bit though. I was, I got complacent. That's what happened. So a coworker of mine recently started working in processing, which is what my library system calls um, the department that like, what do they do? <laughs> put the mylar on, print out the barcodes, stick them on, put on the labels on the, whatever that's called, spine. <laughs> and um, yeah, get them ready to go on the shelf. And she, my coworker just started working in that department and she said, it's actually like really hard on your wrists, which doesn't sound good for me. I get wrist problems just doing check-in, so. Um, but yeah, she said sometimes she'll spend three or four hours 
in a day just putting mylar on books, which sounds horrendous, but it's necessary to protect the books. Yeah, just all that. It's kind of hard on your hands and just like the, drop a book, just like all the folding and like tucking and the little taping and you got to put your hand in between the book and the mylar and it's just sounds horrible there we go let's put it right side up <laughs> might look a little better cool there i don't know if you can even see the difference <laughs> and then i think i can just That's taped. I had no choice. It was taped on. <laughs> no. Okay, anyways. Now I can do it. Boom. Maybe I should have done this on a table so you could see everything I was doing. Too late now. <laughs> there we go. Try to get the barcode off. Aha, okay. So that one didn't go horribly, but it looks kind of like the book is faded so you can see the color difference it's stuck to me. So there's the barcode and there's the book. You can see where it was a little bit, but okay. Okay, spine label, not going super well. I don't buy a whole lot of books, so I try to make it meaningful when I do. I think it's a quality over quantity thing for me. So I tend to only buy books that either I know I'm going to like them, which is very rare, <laughs> Or that I'll buy classics, and I kind of consider this book to be a classic, like a horror classic. I'll buy those. Um, I bought Hench just because it was only two bucks and I really wanted to read it. I guess I'll, yeah, I'll buy books for a variety of reasons. It's just that I don't want to spend very much money on them. Brand new hardcovers right now, like, let's see how much this costs brand new. $47 Canadian. So, <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know if I'm, I'm not exactly made of money, you know? I, I'm not judging people for spending money on books. Of, of all the things in the world to spend money on, I think a book is a pretty valuable investment. <laughs> but I'm just such a cheapo that I don't really. So I think I did pretty well overall. This one looks like it's never been a library book. I got everything off of there. This one, I'm pretty sad about that, to be honest, <laughs> but um, I don't really care about that. And otherwise, I think it looks much, much better. And yeah, pretty happy with the results. And all I needed was a pair of scissors. <laughs> Lastly, I just want to thank everyone who has been watching my videos. If you're subscribed, even if you're not subscribed, but you've watched a few of my videos, or if this is your first one, welcome. Thank you for clicking. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you keep watching <laughs> some more of my videos. Um, when I started this channel, I didn't, I had pretty low expectations. I wasn't really assuming too much. <laughs> didn't really know what would happen. And I'm very grateful for anyone who's watching because you watching encourages me to keep making videos and I really enjoy doing it. So I just want to say thank you. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. And I hope I will see you again very soon in another video. Bye. <laughs> Whatever doesn't kill me makes me stronger. Not lifting weights doesn't kill me. Therefore, not lifting weights makes me stronger. If you ever drop your keys into a river of molten lava, let go because they're gone, man. They're gone. When Armageddon comes, it would be good to be an Olympic athlete because running real fast and jumping over stuff could come in handy. <laughs> Duh.